friends, I'm Megan, and this is Jessie. Hey, everybody. I was wondering if I could teach you a game I learned yesterday at school. Would you like to play a game? Let's listen. That sounds like a yes, Jessie. Okay, what's your game called? It's called Jessie Says. I will tell everyone what to do and you will obey me. Okay, okay, that sounds like fun. Let's watch Jesse and do what he tells us to do. Jesse says, pat your head three times. Okay. One, two, three. Now what, Jesse? Jesse says, make a silly face. Okay, give us one more command, Jesse. Hmm. Oh, oh, Jesse says give a thumbs up. You got it? Yeah, you got it. Friends, you did a great job listening and following directions. Give yourself a pat on the back. Yeah. Today's Bible story is about a man who listened to God and followed directions. His name was Abram. Abram obeyed God. Let's watch and learn what God told Abram to do. God spoke to Abram. He said, go from your home and your family to a place I will show you. I will bless you and make your name famous and the whole world will be blessed through you. Abram obeyed God. His wife Sarai and nephew Lot went with him. God led Abram to the land of Canaan. God said, this is the land I will give to your children. So Abram built an altar to the Lord there. There was no rain in the land and the people did not have enough food to eat. So Abram and his family went to Egypt. After some time, they traveled back to Canaan and went to the place where Abram had built the altar. At this time, Abram was very rich. He had many animals, silver and gold. Lot was also rich with many animals and tents. But now they had a problem. There was not enough room in the land for all of the animals and people. Abram and Lot decided to go different ways. He let Lot choose which land to live in. If you go left, I will go right, said Abram. If you go right, I will go left. Lot looked out and saw that the land of the Jordan was beautiful and full of water, so he chose to live there. Abram traveled the other way and lived in the land of Canaan. God again spoke to Abram. God said, look north, south, east, and west. I will give all that you see to your family forever. I will give you more children and grandchildren than you can count. Get up and walk through the land I have given you. So Abram moved his tent near some trees in a place called Hebron, and he again built an altar to the Lord. Abram believed God's words and obeyed him. God promised to bless Abram and the whole world through someone in Abram's family. God kept this promise when he sent Jesus, who came into the world to rescue sinners.
like to think about the goodness of the Lord. He gives me everything I need and so much more. So I just want to lift my hands and say that I love Him. I just want to lift my heart in praise. And I want to be thankful. I want to be grateful. I want to remember everything that the Lord has done. I want to be thankful. I want to be grateful. I want to be, I want to be, I want to be. I like to think about the goodness of the Lord. He gives me everything I need and so much more. So I just want to lift my hands and say that I love Him. I just want to lift my heart in Abram was a descendant of Noah. He started a journey with his wife, Sarai, his father, Terah, and his nephew, Lot, to the land of Canaan. But on the way there, they decided to settle in the city of Haran instead. God spoke to Abram. He said, go from your land and your family to a place I will show you. I will bless you and make you into a great nation, and the whole world will be blessed through you. Abram went, just as God told him. Sarai and Lot went with him. God led Abram to the land of Canaan. God said, this is the land I will give to your children. So Abram built an altar to the Lord there. A famine came to the land and the people did not have enough food to eat. So Abram, Sarai, and Lot went to Egypt. After some time, they traveled back to Canaan and went to the place where Abram had built the altar between Bethel and Ai. At this time, Abram was very rich. He had many livestock, silver and gold. Lot was also rich with many flocks, herds and tents. Now they had a problem. The land could not support all of their animals and the people with them. The herdsmen taking care of Abram's livestock argued with the herdsmen taking care of Lot's livestock. So Abram and Lot decided to separate. Abram said to Lot, look at this whole land before you. He let Lot choose which land to live in. If you go left, I will go right, said Abram. If you go right, I will go left. Lot looked out and saw that the entire plain of the Jordan was well watered like a beautiful garden. So he chose to live there. Lot journeyed to the east and lived in the cities of the plain near Sodom. And Abram lived in the land of Canaan. After Lot left Abram, God again spoke to Abram. God said, look north, south, east, and west. I will give all that you see to your children forever. I will give you more descendants than you can count. Get up and walk through the land I have given you. So Abram moved his tent to a place called Hebron, and he again built an altar to the Lord. Abram believed God's words and obeyed God's call to leave his land and his family. God promised to bless Abram and the whole world through one of Abram's descendants. God kept this promise when he sent Jesus, who left heaven and came into the world to rescue sinners. Thank you. 
Hi there, I'm Pastor Kevin. It's time for questions from kids. Chloe from Uncasville, Connecticut asks, Do we have to love God more than we love our parents? That is an excellent question. The short answer is yes. We should not love anything more than we love God. This may be difficult to think about, but if your parents love God, they will tell you the same thing. God's holy word says in Matthew chapter 10, the one who loves a father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Now God gave us an instinct to love one another. It's hard to think about a time when you didn't love your own parents. That's because it's an instinct. It's just natural, kind of like blinking. You don't think about blinking, you probably don't think about, hey, I need to love my parents. Here's the thing, however, with God's love. The love you have for God should make you want to love your parents more. It should make you want to be obedient to your parents and respect your parents and pray for your parents and pray with your parents. Uh, God's love should even make you want to share the gospel with your parents. So obey God's commands. Love him, love your parents, and love your neighbors. How does obeying God show that we love him and others. I would love to hear from you. If you have a question, email me at gospelproject.kids at lifeway.com and next time I might be answering a question from you. Here in the Midwest, Indiana's colleges and universities gain lots of attention. Notre Dame, Purdue, and Indiana University. Our professional sports teams have many fans. The Indy 500, the Colts and the Pacers, and the birthplace of Larry Bird. Our economy is known for agriculture, education, and new technology. Nearly 7 million people live and work here. And Send a Network Indiana wants each of them to know the good news of Jesus Christ. And we know that our churches are the best way for them to hear that message. Our Church Planting Network wants to see healthy churches starting new churches and new places and among all people groups in our state. We want churches everywhere for everyone. Whether it be in our big urban centers of Indianapolis and outside of Chicago, or in the small cities and towns from New Albany to South Bend, French Lick, Bloomington, Nashville, Columbus, Fort Wayne, and Muncie. They all need a credible gospel witness. Through church planting, we want to empower disciples to become bold witnesses. We want everyone to be given an invitation to follow Jesus. Send Network Indiana has an opportunity waiting for you. We have pathways of service for church planners and apprentices. We also have opportunities for sending and partner churches to come alongside our church planning teams and to give them the support they need to succeed. Won't you come explore and discover whether God is leading you to be a part of a great movement in our state?
Let me hold.